Hey everybody, it's Mike from BadMagicPlayer.com. I'm just bringing you the second part of a quick uh, overview and play demonstration of the Modern Living End deck. Uh, that's kind of an offshot of what Travis Wu brewed a few years ago. Uh, if you haven't already watched the deck tech that I made, uh, check that out just to see the full list. Uh, what I'm going to do here for a quick second is just kind of solitaire goldfish. Um, so there's a solitaire mode on Magic Online that basically just lets you goldfish. Uh, and what I'm doing is just going to show you kind of how it how it functions uh, without an opponent, um, just to kind of see like the cycling, the cascading, and, and how the combo works out, and just kind of like what what you could kind of expect if you start playing the this deck. So uh, we assume so we're keeping the seven here. Um, gives you the draw, which is interesting. But um, you see the kind of uh, hand we have here. We've got the one black mana uh, cycler here, so that can draw some cards. We've got one of our cascade enablers, uh, which since we're gold fishing, this won't be as relevant. Um, because it's really hard for us to get a creature out early on our own. But, you know, imagine that your opponent is playing something like Zoo, where there's a Birds of Paradise, or a Wild Nakatl, or, um, you know, there's a Wall of Omens in a control deck, or, you know, there's just, could be anything out there. You can go ahead and just target it with that and go nuts. Uh, if you're playing against a deck that doesn't have creatures, you know, like Tron, or uh, Amulet Bloom, or something that early, uh, sometimes just you'll be able to get a Beast Within, or play a Fallmater Mage, and that'll be the way that you're going to get the Demonic Dread to happen. Um, so let's just show you kind of how, how this will play out. Uh, we've got Black Cleave Cliffs. Um, and I always wait to my opponent's end step to, to do the ability. Um, but we're just playing here, so we're just going to cycle for black. And you'll see that our graveyard's going to fill up fill up here. Okay, in the turn. Draw a couple and Gorge. All right, so generally, you know, the Swamp Cycle kind of card is just there to help us get into the, the, the land we need. Right now we don't really need any, so cycling these for two is good. You know, we're on turn two, we've got two awesome things. And there we go, we've got our Violent Outburst, uh, which is the better the better of the two Cascade effects so that we can do that. So we're gonna go ahead and pass the turn. So it's turn three, so we got a Fall Matter Mage, which is pretty good. Um, we can just go ahead and just Mountain. Um, so depending on what your opponent's doing, you know, you got some options here. You can, you know, pass the turn and on their turn, Violent Outburst to do the effect. Um, if it's like a Jund or something where you know you've got a turn or two before it matters, you can play your Fulminator Mage and blow up one of their uh, lands and then get it back next turn. But for the sake of showing you how this how this deck works, we're going to go ahead and play the Cascade card. So like I said before, in the deck tech, Violent Outburst doesn't need a target. Anybody can, You can play it any time because it's an instant, and it can play it regardless of whether they're creatures in play or not. Uh, where Demonic Dread, you got to have a target, so you can't play it unless there's actually a creature on the battlefield, uh, either yours or your opponent. Does, it doesn't matter. It has no real good effect if you're just trying to get the uh, the living end to combo. Um, you're just using it for its cat's gate. It just has that restriction. Um, just you know, That's just the only way to play it. So we're going to Violent Outburst here. So the way this would work, um, I'll go through it as if we were playing it in paper. Uh, so I, I would announce that I'm going to cast Violent Outburst and announce that a Cascade is going, the Cascade trigger is going in the stack. So if you notice, there's no interaction between, uh, there's no priority change between you announcing that you're casting the Cascade spell and the Cascade trigger ability going on the stack. Those happen simultaneously. So right now your opponent would get, prior, you could pass priority to your opponent and before you Cascade, your, your opponent can decide what to do. So you'd say, uh, I'm casting Violent Outburst and I'm putting the Cascade ability on the stack. Uh, any effects and your opponent would say no okay so we will cascade so what you would do is you'd start exiling and revealing the top cards of your library one at a time until you get uh a, until you find living end so it's hard to see here because it's ma magic online but it's see it took us five cards in to find the living end and what you would do is uh so you choose whether or not you want to cast living end uh, if you choose not to do it, you're going to take Living End and the cards you revealed in Exile, and you're going to sh uh, shuffle them up and put them on the bottom of your library. Uh, in a competitive event, that means you got to let your opponent uh, look at the cards and cut them, shuffle, whatever. You know, they have the ability to uh, cut and shuffle um, before you put them on the bottom, just like you would your whole deck. You just kind of imagine it as that's kind of your, a subsection of your deck treated the same way as if just you were fetching for something. So obviously I'm going to cast Living End here just to see the effect. Um, I'll hold priority here. So, all right, so Living End's going to go on the stack. Um, as you see, the deck shuffled, uh, the game shuffled those five revealed cards back into the bottom of my library. Um, and so Living End goes on the stack. So the way you would do this is you find Living End, you say, I will choose to cast Living End. 
Um, and then you can either hold priority and do things like cycle more creatures or whatever you want to do before living in resolves, or you can say, uh, say do nothing and say, okay, do you have any effects before living in resolves? A lot, a lot of times, and this happened a few times yesterday, my opponent says, well, what the hell does living in do? And I you basically just show them the card, they have to read it, and see what they say. You know, uh, sometimes they might call a judge. If it's a, if it's a competitive event, you know, it's different. If it's you're playing on Friday Night Magic, you know, help your opponent understand how it works. There's nothing wrong with good sportsmanship in that way and, and gamesmanship and trying to actually like play the game and understand and learn. But if you're at a PT, PPTQ or a, you know a 1K or a, a Star City thing, you know, just hand your opponent the card and then ask. Is there anything you would like to do before Living In resolves? And when they say no, or they do something, uh, then Living In resolves, and we let that happen. So all of the cards come in from the graveyard, and they trigger. So this is the hard part about playing this in paper, is sometimes you'll have three or four cards that will have triggers, um, and just tr you have to order them right and, and resolve them in the right order, and it can get a little confusing, especially to newer players. So that's why I really recommend playing this online for a while before you try to play it in person. So here, all we have is an Architect's Will. Uh, we get to choose uh, a player, target a player to look at their top three cards. You know, obviously it's a solitaire game, so we're only going to choose ourselves. Um, it depends on what you would do, what's what the game, how the game's going, on who you actually look at. Uh, like I said in the deck tech, if you uh, are playing against a control deck or something where you just don't want them to draw a Wrath of God effect, or you know you've stripped out a bunch of lands and you just want to keep the player off drawing lands as far as as much as they can, you know you can take a look at their opponent's library and kind of set them up to to fail for a couple turns if possible, or at least you get to know what they're going to get. Um, if you think the game's going to go a little longer and you're not going to really be able to seal the deal by looking at their library, then look at yourself. Often you're going to have two of them and you get to look at both. That's the nice thing about having three in the deck. Uh, and the, often you're going to have the dead shot minotaur, which when it comes into play is going to do three damage to target creature with flying. And often that that the only creature with flying that comes into play off living in is fairy macabre. So that's going to kill kind of be a non combo there. Um, and it's okay, you know, fairy macabre still does their job and still probably took out some good creatures um, or flashback cards you didn't want there anyway. All right, so architects will will show me my top three. Uh, it's pretty good. We don't care about the land, so I can go on the top. Um, Beast within, Vile Outburst, you know, it doesn't matter right now, but... Okay, and then, finally, that, that Cascade card you originally cast uh, will resolve. Um, and you notice it gave my creatures plus, what, plus, uh, plus one plus zero. And that's basically how, the, how that deck functions. Um, you're just cycling things until you get... Um, you know, until you get the the combo. Sometimes you're gonna have to combo more than once. You know, if, if if in this case we only had two creatures, you know, they could have lightning bolt at the architects, and maybe they have a blocker, um, and they start playing creatures. You might have the demonic dread do it again. So I'll show you that. So I demonic dread targeting the, my own jungle weaver. Although in this case we don't actually have anybody in the graveyard, so that won't happen. But let's see. So demonic dread. I'm going to cast it. It's going to, same thing. Remember, you're putting the card with Cascade on the stack, then you're putting the Cascade trigger on the stack, and then you're passing priority to your opponent. And then you go look through the, through the living end. Let's say in this case, I wanted to just get that creature to blo to, blo to be blo not be able to block, and I don't want to cast living end. On Magic Online, it says cast living end. No, so you can click no. Uh, but in, in paper form, you'd say, I will choose not to cast Living End. You'd say no, and then that whole list that was there, the Exiled cards and Living End, that all the cards that were revealed will get shuffled and put on the bottom library. So that Living End will still be in your library for the next time you want a Demonic Dread or Violent Outburst. And just remember that there are only three Living Ends in this deck, so if you draw all three, you will cascade through your entire deck and find nothing, and then just have to shuffle your whole deck. You won't lose the game for cascading through your entire deck. You only lose the game if you draw your entire deck, right? So if if uh, if you have all three living ends in your graveyard or in your hand or suspended, they're just not in your deck anymore, uh, cascading will not hurt you. It'll just show your whole deck to your opponent, uh, and you'll still get the effect that you want. So sometimes you have to close out the game with Violent Outburst to give a couple of creatures plus one, uh, and you'll, just, you'll have no living ends, so you're basically flipping your deck upside down and showing your opponent and shuffling it up. And there's no, no problem with that, um, especially if you're trying to get the effect. Sometimes just making a creature not block is enough to make you win the game 
Um, so, so don't forget that you can use those abilities just the way they are. Again, nothing in the deck costs less than three except for Living End. Uh, and, and remember that uh, you can suspend Living End. Um, so what I can do is show you how that works. Um, well, I, I can't really show you here, but essentially you're just going to pay two and two black. Uh, you're going to exile it, and you're going to put three counters on it. And then every on your upkeep, you'll uh, you'll remove a counter. So when you do that, I suggest putting a, a die or some kind of token on top of your library to uh, remind you that you've got to take a suspend counter off. And then after the the suspend counters are removed, uh, you can you you cast the the spell, uh, and you have to cast the spell once it the suspend counters come off. It's not on you may so. Um, and people can, your opponents can counter and react to the, to the living end once it comes off the suspend counter. So it doesn't get cast when you suspend it. It gets cast when the last counter comes off. Um, so keep in mind if you're trying to think about playing around counter spells uh, with a suspended living end, it's it could be countered once the last suspend uh, counter is removed. Cool. So again, name of the game: cycle, cycle, cycle. Find the living end combo. Put dudes in the bin. Make them come alive beat your opponent's face. Great. All right. Well, good luck and have fun.